Okay, we're back. Um, I, I stopped to get lunch. That's what the beeping was in the that you heard in the background. Um, and so that was my oven because I don't have a microwave. I, dude, I haven't had a microwave in like five years. Uh, but anyway, I was making a pistachio pesto. It was warming up in my oven. Pistachio pesto, mwah, beautiful, delicious dish. Chef's kiss for sure. Back to our discussion about uh, labeling theory, right? So we have all these negative labels and we're, and we're focused on them. Um, and, you know, so what we, there's kind of like a process that, you know, ends up happening associated with this or what is uh, intended to do it. So if we think about like, first let's like think about in a criminal justice standpoint, uh, oh, my, my pen's off. And now we're back on. Uh, if we think about like why we assign a label, right? Um, one um, is that, you know, we have two different sources, right? So if we think about labeling, there is, you know, there are formal labels and there are informal labels. So informal is going to come from like, you know, our peers, our family. And, you know, formal is going to be things from like the system, like the criminal justice system, or government, right? Now, if we think about like why we have like a uh, negative label, why we go through this process, right? Um, you know, think about like what it, what it actually intended, right? So one, we give, if, especially if it's a negative label. So if we give someone a negative label, the ultimate purpose of this, right, is to uh, deter behavior. Right, so how, what what does that mean, right? So we're trying to prevent um, undesirable behavior. So if we, you know, we'll use like a couple of uh, examples uh, related to that, right? So one is going to be like what? So we'll, we'll use, we'll use counterpoints, right? So if we think about one, right, you know, you know, if we use the word slut, right? So it's a negative word that's used in our society and is often, you know, uh, attributed to people who perhaps dress in suggestive ways or perhaps court uh, a number of promiscuous partners. And typically this word is used uh, for women, right? So uh, when we think about this word slut then, right? So what it means is that it has a negative attachment to uh, suggestive or uh, promiscuous behavior. And in some ways, right, you know, what we're trying to get people to do is internalize shame. We, you know, we want women, which is what this word is mostly used for, uh, to internalize shame for their behavior by acting and attracting, um, you know, a sexual attention from other people, right? So this is seen, you know, this been, especially in certain areas of the country, right, is seen as um, immoral, um, you know, it leads to, you know, an ill repute. Uh, one of my favorite word phrases, but it's kind of old timey is like women of ill repute. Like that is just, oh, it's just a fantastic way. So moral, you know, you have ill repute, you know, maybe boy killer is another one <clears throat> that sometimes you hear <clears throat> related to that. But the point of, <coughs> you know, giving people this word, right? Or you'll hear people discuss, right? If you call someone like a slut, um, the intent is to isolate that person from the rest of society or perhaps from a, a you know, a peer group, right? And to, you know, make them outcast. And also, you know, serve as a warning, like, hey, uh, you know, Jenny, or uh, Maria, whoever, um, you know, careful, don't go too far with Sam or, you know, uh, Frederick, because, you know, you could be seen as a slut. You wouldn't want that, would you? Like that kind of behavior. 
So the intent of it is to prevent promiscuous uh, sexual activity and prevent people from really leading into it because you know there there may be a societal expectation um, that uh, you you don't do that right. So the counter one that we have right, or a counter one right. Uh, you know guys are typically not called sluts, although there could be slutty dudes out there. Fun fact, next time you see a guy who's being slutty, just call him slut, you know, see what he says about this, right? But sometimes the the word that's often used for men or can be used for men is the one of, like, you know, a uh, fuck boy. I don't know if that's spelled with an I or a Y, uh, so we're just going to use the first one, right? So, you know, this is a person who, uh, you know, flirts uh, with many people. Actually, you know what? We're going to look at the Urban Dictionary definition real quick. Because uh, I haven't... That's what. This is one of those words that I use. Um, yeah, okay. So it's meant to be a person who has many uh, casual sexual partners. Let's see. Okay. So flirts with many uh, women and has many casual... Uh, sex partners. Let's see. A boy plays with girls' feelings and doesn't really like them. It would do or say anything a girl wants to hear to have sex with him or to get something that they want. Uh, knows what girls want to hear, but they hurt so many girls. Once they are a fuckboy, they will always be a fuckboy. If you know a guy's a fuckboy, don't fall for him. Usually fuckboys are cute, so yeah. <laughs> you usually can't tell if they are a fuckboy based on how they dress and act. He's kind of like a player and hoe, right? So, again, similar behavior, right? A lot of casual partners. This is from Urban Dictionary. That's where I got that definition. Flirts with many women, has many casual sex partners, right? And so, you know, when you think about the connotation of this word, right? You know, these people are uh, manipulative. You know, they're cunning. You know, and they, you know, they are, you know, predators, right? Because they're, they're preying on the women out there, um, you know, who in, only for sexual gratification, they aren't in it for, you know, any kind of meaningful relationship, right? Now, as we discussed when we were last in person, you know, there could be biological reasons why that's the case, but we'll set that aside for the moment, right? So the point, though, of labeling someone like a fuckboy, right, is that you don't be seen as a fuckboy, right, is that... You're trying to get someone to commit to a relationship, right? And so you're trying to deter, you know, someone from having casual sexual partners. It's also meant to serve as like a warning um, to other women that, hey, this dude's a player. You better watch out. Um, you know, he'll 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 uh, screw around and mess with your heart, right? Now, we'll set aside the fact that maybe if no one says they're committed, then, like, why did you believe that they would be committed anyway? But, you know, that's a whole different issue, right? It's a whole different issue that we won't get into, right? It's really important, guys. An important lesson from this, if you never take anything else, right, is that it is super crucial that everyone's on the same page. And until there is a discussion of exclusivity, I can't even speak, exclusivity, until there's a discussion of that, that you are the only people each other are seeing, assume everyone is seeing other people, right? That is the safest thing. Now, if you want to commit, have a commitment conversation, but don't think they're trying to manipulate you um, or they're trying to get, go over on you um, until you have that conversation about being exclusive. Once you guys have established they're exclusive and they violate that, totally different story. But until then... Hey, don't get mad, right? Because, you know, they never said they were exclusive and you should be mad at yourself for not having that conversation if that's what you wanted. That's my lesson for the day. So anyway, right, we have these kinds of labels and they're meant to, like, you know, if you would give someone like a fuckboy label, hey, you know, don't you do that, you know, don't mess with my heart, be upfront with, like, where you're at and something like that. Everyone that falls victim to this, right? Uh, because we project what we want onto other people without having these real kinds of conversations. And honestly, if you have hurt feelings because you didn't have like a conversation about you what you actually wanted, you should only be mad at yourself, not the person who you know didn't have that conversation. But that's a different conversation. 
So that's what the intent of it is, right? So if we think about in a criminal justice setting, right, when we give people, you know, the label of a felon or a criminal or a prisoner or something like that, right, it is intended to signal um, the consequences of misbehavior to other people. So there is in some ways, right, like a, a to a specific deterrent effect because we want to prevent it for the other people. And it's also intended uh, to be like a sort of like general deterrent for other people, right? So we're trying to prevent the behavior for one person and also prevent other people from feeling that way. But the problem is, is that uh, labeling theory predicts that there is a backfire effect. So with the backfire effect then, because there is a negative label, there is a deviance amplification effect. So that because someone cannot shed their label, so if we can't shed the label, so we can't get rid of it, there are negative consequences We view this as part of our identity. And because we start believing that we are bad people because we have all these negative associations with like a negative term, then, you know, we feel tra entrapped, feel trapped by the situation. and will offend. Okay, so we'll pause the video here and we'll pick up in the next